What's up everyone? This has been a pretty crazy week. I've picked up a lot of things, uh, a lot of really high quality items. A few days ago I posted a picture on the uh, VGS Facebook page showing some of those items and got quite a few comments about them. Um, I've done some trades. I drove a decent distance to go pick up uh, this one lot of stuff at a pet store, which I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, and only a few things came from garage sales. I actually didn't even go garage selling on Saturday. I went uh, to a couple on Friday um, that I saw posted online. So barely anything from garage sales this week. But um, I wanted to mention real quick before I get too far into this video that there will not be a Video Game Sellers episode up um, coming this Wednesday. I will put some type of video up on Wednesday or Thursday, but I had uh, plans this weekend on both Saturday and Sunday, so hence the no garage sailing really, and um, then no VGS episode filmed on Sunday. So well, I'll be back next week for Video Game Sellers, um, so don't worry, it's just a one week hiatus. Uh, but on to this insane amount of stuff that I got. Uh, the first I'm going to show is from a trade that I did with Sega Saturn Gamer 48 um, here on YouTube. And I gave him a stack of N64 games. And I got a copy of Pokemon Ruby, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, a complete copy of Deadhead Fred. Um, I'm always on the lookout for like the more obscure PSP games because I have a few people that are always on the lookout uh, when I have them. So I picked that up basically for someone I know that's been looking for it. Um, I got a N64 controller, just a gray, a little bit loose joystick, but otherwise in good shape. And a fat PS2 for Aaron. Hope that'll make him happy. And this is the highlight piece um, from this trade. It is Chrono Trigger on the Super Nintendo in very nice condition. So thank you very much, man. Um, awesome uh, condition on everything and good explanation of the condition, so I always appreciate that. Uh, so thank you. And then, um, actually, right after I left the flea market this past Sunday, I met up with someone that I've done a few uh, transactions with locally, and he told me he had this a few weeks ago. It's kind of sneaking in. You can kind of see it there. And uh, I uh, was I wanted it, but we were trying to work out a good price because I've been on the lookout for this specific model of this system for a while. Um, and when he said he had one complete in the box in good shape, I said, okay, you know, I, I want it, we'll figure something out. So I ended up picking up a Model 2 Super Nintendo, complete in the box, very good condition. The whole, like, uh, label is still on the back, not torn off. Um, the controller inside was a little yellowed, so I swapped it out for a better one. But besides that, it was in really good shape. And um, I paid the highest top dollar I would pay for basically this system which was a hundred bucks and that's pretty high for me to buy like a complete box system uh, I actually am not a huge system collector but if something comes up in really good condition and it's like complete like this then I'll normally snag it so that's why I did you know, that's why I bought this um, a little while back I, I actually had a couple Model 2's just you know loose just the system themselves and I traded them off or sold them, uh, and I kind of regretted not keeping at least one of them, so that's the makeup for it. I ended up buying a complete one, but this next trade is pretty crazy. Uh, I guess the story would begin a few weeks back, right after I picked up the large lot of TurboGrafx stuff from Aaron's store. Basically the thing that kicked off the past couple weeks of like random Turbo finds at the flea market and this trade. Uh, I hadn't even talked about that find at Aaron's store online yet. And within like 24 hours, I get a message on Facebook from a guy named Joel who says, Hey, I just picked up some TurboGrafx stuff, and I was wondering if you'd be interested in it. Um, and my first thought was, there's no way. Like, no one ever has Turbo stuff, and they never contact me about it. And especially right after this find, I'm like, this is crazy. So I uh, messaged him back saying, yeah, absolutely. What do you have? And uh, we went back and forth, and actually I got on the phone with him. And uh, he ended up having four games that I wanted, two of them very obscure, hard to find, expensive, um, and then in the process of trying to figure out, uh, you know, the price or what we were going to do, I ended up going through almost every game, good game I had available uh, at that time, you know, in, in my uh, flea market inventory to see if we could figure out something where I could, you know, get these games for not a incredibly expensive price. We were able to work out a trade, and uh, here's the four that I picked out. The best thing he got, um, I think, was 
Pocky and Rocky on the Super Nintendo, um, but that was on top of multiple other games. Um, so the four I got were R-Type Complete. Funny thing is, uh, before the package even came in the mail, one of the other Turbo Finds in the, this last episode of Video Game Sellers, um, I ended up picking up another copy of R-Type. So two copies of R-Type in one week on the Turbo, uh, Turbo Graphics 16. Uh, the next one is Ordine, another uh, shoot 'em up. This one's complete. These are all complete, basically. Um, and then the two games that I absolutely really, really wanted, uh, the really obscure ones, Exile, The Wicked Phenomenon. It's technically, I guess, Exile 2. And I love the cover art for this. It's kind of hard to tell with the glare, but it looks like it's like made out of clay. Um, really obscure working, de working designs uh, RPG on the system. And then uh, the number one thing I wanted from him, Vastille, um, another working designs title. Oh, logo's over there. And uh, this is complete with the map and obviously the game and everything's in really good shape. Only thing it does not have is there was like a little cardboard sleeve that went around the outside of the case. Um, but I wasn't going to complain. I mean, obviously... I don't have the cardboard boxes for all my TurboGrafx-16 games, as long as it has the original hard cases, but incredible that, you know, such obscure games uh, were offered as a trade, and I'm very, very happy that uh, we were able to work something out. So thank you, Joel, if you're watching this. And then to top it all off, this week I also got back, and this is the first time you guys are seeing this, um, I sent it away for repairs, and I got back my uh, Turbo CD player, in perfect working condition now and actually he sent me the guy that repaired it he sent me a little extra gear in case the gear inside gets uh, stripped over time um, so thank you very much for that repair also to you but I really doubt you're watching this so <laughs> oh well this pickup is what made this week extra epic um, I was contacted by a guy named Jeremy and he lived about 45 minutes to an hour away depending on traffic um, and he said that he sells games at his parents' pet store, and uh, he wanted to know if there was anything I'd be interested in. And we, we contacted back and forth, and I decided that I was going to make the trek down there, um, which ended up being more like an hour and 15 minute car ride because the traffic was really, really, really bad. Um, but I took a couple clips from their pet store, and I'll show you that right now. This has to be the most interesting video game pickup I've had, definitely in a long time. I'm in a pet store, and a uh, really nice pet store. They got reptiles and fuzzy creatures, chinchillas, uh, but they also have video games. There is a uh, decent little shelf over here of video games. There's uh, this guy, Jeremy, say hello to the YouTube. Hello. <laughs> um, he contacted me uh, through YouTube saying that he's not too far away. He was actually like going to be like up in our area where the flea market is. Um, but I wasn't going to be there on the day he was. So uh, I decided that I would drive to where he is, which is in Bradenton. Breeding and that's like an hour drive if I hit every single red light like I did. So Jeremy's not the owner of the store. His, his mom's over. Say hi, Mom. <laughs> um, how long ago did you start selling games in here? Mm, probably about a year ago. And it's been doing pretty well? Pretty good. I started at the old store. It was like right I, down the road? Yeah. Gotcha. And I brought it all here and expanded, bought some more stuff, and whatever I don't need, I just sell here. And people bring stuff in? And the name of the store is also? Bayshore Pets. Bayshore Pets. So if you need to purchase a Conyor and a copy of Legend of Zelda, you can come here and get it. Or if you have some games and you're in this area, you know, bring them on down. And he has really good prices. I, uh, we did sort of a half purchase, half trade. I was running really low on some things at the booth or at the flea market. And also he had some stuff I wanted for my collection. So I picked up quite a bit of stuff down here and some boxed systems, which I will show you uh, all of this, I guess, when I get home. But um, where's the stuff you grab? You already put it around? Well, yeah, there's some, like, a few PSP games. There's DSi. a DSi up there. A couple GameCube games. A few games up are up mixed on the shelf. Um, nothing super amazing, but some good things, like Resident Evil Outbreak Final 2. Uh, so a decent transaction on, uh, on both our parts, and I definitely say thank you very much for making the hour-long trip down here worth it, man. Yeah. <laughs> 
Jeremy was a really cool guy, and I appreciate him inviting me to his store. He's going to most likely be in a Video Game Sellers episode also coming up. I think he's going to make the trek up here like next weekend, so it'll be cool seeing him again. I'm going to show you everything I got from him. It was part trade, part cash, and uh, I kind of told him the, the price that I could pay to have it make sense for me, and he agreed flat out, so it was a really super uh, smooth transaction as well, so thank you very much, man. First, I'm going to show you the stuff that I'm going to keep for myself. Um, DK, King of Swing on the GBA. The uh, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. I have the Link's Awakening on the Game Boy Color, the DX version. I actually did not have a copy of the gray cart, so I'm going to hang on to that one. Uh, Mole Mania, <laughs> a couple weeks ago, or last week, I can't remember which one, on a Video Game Sellers episode. Aaron gave a copy of Mole Mania on the Game Boy to the Mole, and um, I played it a little bit of it, and actually it was pretty damn fun, so I picked up a copy for myself. A complete box copy of King's Knight uh, on the NES. Uh, this is a, a Square game. Um, I really love the uh, cover art for it, and it comes with like a map, or not a map, a poster, and the manual is inside, all in really nice shape. A copy of Thief Deadly Shadows and a complete copy of Bomberman Generation. Uh, I actually had this without the manual, so I've been looking for the fucking manual. Now I got another complete copy, so cool. Um, now the stuff that I am not keeping, uh, we'll start, I guess, with the DS games. We got Diddy Kong Racing, Yoshi's Island DS, and there's a copy of Pokemon Pearl inside as well. Uh, New Super Mario Bros, Legend of Zelda, Phantom Hourglass, Times 2. This didn't have the case, but I had an extra case. Uh, Super Mario 64. Little stack of uh, GBA games. We have two copies of the Golden Sun Lost Age game. And then two copies of First Golden Sun. And Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, so that's two copies of that I got this week. Uh, GoldenEye 007 on the Wii with the gold controller. The controller has like never been used, so that's in really awesome condition. Uh, I grabbed this for Aaron just as like a gift. The <laughs> the uh, Super Mario Galaxy commemorative coin. Uh, coins in this little cardboard pullout right in there. I have uh, this myself I got back when I got the game. We have another DS game, so loose cart of Mario and Luigi Partners in Time. Jersey Devil on the PlayStation. Medieval 2. This copy might actually be in better condition than mine. Uh, Crash 2. First Crash. That, that should have been the subtitle for Crash, <laughs> Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot, First Crash. Uh, Crash Bandicoot Warped, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, a uh, few more Game Boy games, we got uh, Donkey Kong Land 2, Super Mario Land, two copies of Kirby Dream Land, Banjo-Kazooie, GoldenEye, Star Fox 64, and... Then a stack of games and cases. Kingdom Hearts 2, Final Fantasy X 2. Uh, there was a sealed copy of Pandora's Tower. I ended up swapping it out for my open copy of Pandora's Tower. I have another open copy of Pandora's Tower also, so uh, I have one to play, and then I, was, I just decided to keep the sealed one for myself. Uh, Spyro, Enter the Dragonfly, Resident Evil 4 on the GameCube, Zelda Twilight Princess, uh, that's that, <laughs> that's that uh, copy of Bomberman Generations that I had without the manual. Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts, Animal Crossing on the GameCube, uh, Shining Force Neo, Custom Robo, Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, stack just keeps fucking going, uh, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Super Mario Galaxy, Mario Kart on the Wii, New Super Mario Bros. on the Wii, and Final Fantasy X. And then, uh, I'm just going to do this to make it easier because I just realized they're all out in the living room. Not one, 
not two, <laughs> but three fat PS2s that are out there, uh, and one slim PS2. Um, those will all be going to Aaron as well. And then the cream of the crop stuff um, that I decide I'm keeping all of these for my collection because I did not actually have uh, these specific versions of them. Um, these box systems uh, I got for an awesome price and they are in really nice condition so let me grab those. Most of these box systems uh, were the ones that were in the picture that I posted on Facebook a few days ago. Um, first up a pretty much like new condition NES action set uh, complete in the box and this looks like it was never really played. If it was it was taken out, set on a shelf, and then put right back in the box, it seems. The box is in fantastic condition. I mean, there's no damage to it at all. Uh, I have my childhood Red Zapper action set uh, complete in the box still. Um, and I've had that, obviously, since I was a kid. This is the Gray Zapper set, and uh, I'm gonna, that's why I said I'm going to go ahead and keep this one, because it's so perfect, you know, condition-wise and I don't own this variant of it. And the next one is a complete in box Super Nintendo, the Super Mario World 2 Controller Edition. I just have a complete in box uh, Super Mario, or not Super Mario, just a Super Nintendo with one controller, no game uh, complete in the box. This system inside was a little yellow, um, but I'm actually going to be uh, sort of doing a swap and part purchase from Jeremy as well for a really nice condition gray one to put in here because this one is also in really good shape. It does have uh, the skew cut out on the back. That's the only really major issue with the box, but everything else is in really good condition inside. Then we have a controller up oh, right there. <laughs> this is the Super Advantage a controller for the Super Nintendo, um, still in its baggy. Oh, that was the other thing. Uh, those systems also, like, all in their bags. The controllers are in the bags. This inside has the uh, manual, and it's in its bag. I don't think this has ever been played uh, with at all either. And I saw that Machine Games TX actually found uh, at either Goodwill or Salvation Army, can't remember which one, he found one of these complete in the box um, recently as well. So, yay for both of us. <laughs> And uh, then, oh shit, hold on, it's sitting over there, I can't reach it. We have a uh, Game Boy Advance SP, uh, the black model, and um, this is not only in the box, but it's still factory sealed. This has never been opened on both sides in fantastic condition. Um, like I said, I normally don't collect systems, and I'm not a really big sealed collector, but if I can find stuff in this pristine of shape, and for the price that I paid for it, then I definitely hang on to it um, because I don't I don't mind having it. Obviously, I'm more about the games, but you know, if things are in that good a condition, then you know I'll definitely put them into my game vault. Uh, and then this one's probably, at least to me, probably the coolest of the box systems um, because it is a special version. It's a GameCube in a box, <laughs> you know, not sealed or anything. But it is the Zelda Collector's Edition uh, bundle, and it does have the game in here in really nice condition, uh, and it has the little black and purple GameCube game pouch that it comes with, all its paperwork, everything is in really, really nice condition. And the reason why this is sort of the coolest thing now to me in the sense of these systems is I actually have a, a sealed copy of the Zelda, Collect Zelda Collector's Edition um, that I can now put with this. So even though the box on the outside isn't sealed, um, it's pretty damn close to having a brand new condition uh, Zelda Collector's Edition GameCube in the box. So that was pretty sweet. And a couple more items that I actually forgot to show um, that I got from him. Uh, Super Smash TV. This I'm keeping also because I just traded away a copy of this that was in just a little bit poorer of a condition than that I would keep for myself. It was still in okay shape, but it had a little bit of peeling on the label, and there was a few little marks on the cart, but... So I'm keeping that because it's damn near perfect. And then a purple N64 controller. I believe that is all the stuff that I got from Jeremy, so incredibly awesome pickup. And thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you again, man, uh, very soon, hopefully.
We are almost at the end. Um, these things I got from garage sales on Friday. I saw both of these sales posted online. I knew they had games. Um, I actually contacted one of them ahead of time and asked them if they could put them aside, which never works, and they said okay. Um, for 50 bucks, I picked up four PS3 games. You might be like, what the fuck, 50 bucks at a garage sale? They were definitely worth it. Uh, Call of Duty Ghost, Grand Theft Auto 5, Saints Row 4, and the complete edition of Grand Theft Auto 4. They had another 10 or so uh, PS3 games, but these were the only four that were going to be worth it picking them up for the price that they were asking. And then for 20 bucks, a copy of Mario & Luigi Bowser's Inside Story, and I thought it was just a DS. Um, it didn't say that it was complete in the box. Um, it is a silver DS with its silver stylus and its little silver GBA port piece of plastic. Um, it's in okay condition. It does have some scratches and marks like on its shell, um, which is the reason why I'm not going to keep this for my collection because it's just not in good enough condition, but still really cool for 20 bucks. And then a few items that I picked up just for myself this week, um, or actually the, the week last week and a half or so, I guess. Um, a, co a complete box copy of Super Turkin on the uh, Super Nintendo and Supernova on the Super Nintendo. So two Super Super Nintendo games, uh, both in really nice condition. And oh, one thing I want to mention is I keep like all my box games in these plastic cases. If you've never seen or heard about these plastic cases and you have box games it's definitely uh, something you would want to check out uh, they're they obviously do a good job of keeping you from accidentally crushing them or getting dinged up um and you can normally buy them for like super cheap if you get get them in large lots you can get like 50 of them for like uh 80 cents a piece or so um but lots of different websites and uh ebay sellers sell them just look for like protective game cases uh, a couple controllers I got from my collection. I, I mentioned I'm collecting all the different varieties of uh, PS3, 360, and honestly of any system, but right now I'm re really on the PS3 and 360. I got this uh, gray, sort of metallic um, PS3 controller, and a pretty obscure 360 one, the solid white uh, 360 controller. And by that I mean the front panel is solid white, the top panel, and you ha it has light gray thumbsticks and the light gray directional pad. Um, normally the white ones obviously have that front, the gray front to them, or there's a couple other variants. But uh, So both of those are new, and I think finally guys, oh no, I'm lying, oh, almost, you know, you could almost leave. Um, I did pick up another Turbo game, this was just a purchase. I thought I owned this, and after getting the... Um, uh, Exile, uh, Wicked uh, Phenomenon, I ended up getting a complete sealed copy of Exile, which even a sealed one of the first game is really not that expensive. Uh, I think I paid like 50 bucks or something for it, so good, con really good condition, obviously it's sealed. Um, now I think that's it. Uh, I wanted to mention that with the Turbo stuff, on Retro Liberty's newest video, Ricky picked up a fucking Turbo, uh, Gra Turbo Graphic 16 game. I think it was Legendary Axe 2, so Turbo Games are falling from the sky right now, apparently, so keep them coming, whoever sent them. Um, and I did want to mention, kind of ending on, I guess, a, sort of a shitty note, I did happen to see, uh, while I was watching their video, that Jew Wario, um, a fellow YouTuber, passed away, and uh, I didn't personally really know him. I have watched his videos over the years, though, and it's always sad when anybody, like, in your community... Um, you know, has something bad happened to him or passed away. So I want to send my condolences out to uh, his family and um, uh, in a memoriam of him. I think everyone should go subscribe to his channel. You know, obviously it's it's just something to do. Um, it's just sort of a way to show you know that we're thinking of him and uh, uh, we miss him. So I'll leave the link to his channel down below. Go subscribe to him. And as always, you know, everyone, thank you for watching. Thumbs up if you don't mind. Let me know what you found this week uh, at the garage sales or flea markets or whatever, or what you just bought, if you bought something really cool you've been looking for for a long time. I'm going to imagine this video is pretty damn long, so I'm wrapping it up now. Uh, thank you all. I will talk to you all later. Peace.